Hi, this is Governor John Carney. 31 years ago, the Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law. It was a major milestone for disability rights in our country. The ADA did more than just create standards for access to buildings and public spaces. It meant that all citizens, no matter of the disability, are entitled to the same rights and privileges as their neighbors. Not because of charity, but because of it's their right as citizens. During July, we celebrate Disability Pride Month, and we recommit to our goal of moving to a more inclusive society. Persons with disabilities make up a large, diverse community in our state and across the country. More than one in five individuals have a disability, and these folks come from all ages, races, ethnicities, religions, and socioeconomic backgrounds. They are our friends and neighbors, our coworkers and family members. This month, I encourage Delawareans to recognize the unique role played by every person in our state. Let's celebrate our differences and diversity in all of our communities. And to our neighbors living with a disability, take pride in who you are and the ways you enrich our great state. I'm Mason Schrader. I am a, a disability advocate and archeologist. I'm currently in pursuing my master's degree in bioarchaeology at the University of Texas Tech. And then five to seven years uh, will be the PhD. My mom went into premature labor about almost three months early. And essentially a mini stroke happened when I was like, you know, days old. And because of this, I have cerebral palsy. My brother does as well. I study a lot about disabled people in the, in the past. Common sense is that, well, with modern medicine means that there are more disabled people today. But that's not the case with every disability. I've been to France, I've been to Spain, Argentina. Some archaeologists have kind of been all over the place. I have been less so because I've applied to a lot of places and they've said, nope, you're too much of a liability, so we can't. I think it's underestimating both the person and the, 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 the practice of doing archaeology, because let's be real, everybody's a liability. I don't blame people for not knowing what I mean when I say I ambulate with crutches. What I think is not as legitimate is when after I've explained to them what all that means and why I can dig and specifically how I dig, they still look at me and say, I think you're wrong, I think you're more dangerous. And that's the part where I think is less uh, legitimate because it's, it's not believing me. Learning about how, how disabled people were treated in the past can help us better treat disabled people today. I also hope that, that, that I can look back and say that I was compassionate, that I saw the humanity in everyone. I want to act on a, a deeply held belief that we all sort of deserve to be, be, be seen equally. We've been together for 20 years. 20 years. And married four years. We actually met at Bank of America. MBNA. MBNA at the time. Leslie. Laura. Well, we met on the dating site on Facebook uh, a little over a month ago. She was persistent. <laughs> <laughs> she was very persistent. We've been pretty much inseparable since. I have been with my wife for 39 years. When I first met Bill, I was newly divorced. We were in our 30s. We weren't fresh out of high school or anything. I invited him over to my 19th birthday party. And ever since then, like, I fell in love with him. She took me to the riverfront. What was that place called? Timothy's. Timothy's. And we had lunch. I'm pretty sure my profile said no hiking. But she tricked me and made me park the car all the way on one side and we walked to the other. And I was like, don't think I didn't notice what you did there. I mean, I always liked her from the very beginning and it's just that I just couldn't stop loving her from the beginning. 
Okay, who's more romantic? He is very romantic. He loves to cook. I help him cook. It's not all about, like, the romantic romantic. It's more of, you know, the simple romantic, if that's even a thing anymore. I don't know. What is romance? Sometimes it can be cooking together, or it can be, uh, you know, sitting out in the yard. It can be playing with the dogs. Just writing a little note. I save all the notes. They're on my mirror. Going for a drive. Packing lunch. Sometimes it's sitting in two separate rooms because we don't like the same thing on TV. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love the fact that he's very strong, kind eyes, sensitive, and tall enough to reach the height shelves. Anytime that each other were hurt, we were always there for each other. I mean, she's always there for me no matter what. That's how I know that she was the one. You never know with online dating and who you're going to meet and what they're like in person. I found a keeper. <laughs> well, she's compassionate in just about everything she does. So you like my compassion, huh? I really, really appreciate and love that Bill never stops me from doing any of those compassionate or passionate things. And he takes a dog for a walk. Both dogs. Both dogs, yes. Don't move so fast. I ended up with people that I don't need to surround myself around. And I'm finally at the point where I need to settle down and plan my future out. Just because you have a disability does not mean you can't be married. If you really true love somebody, everybody should be getting married. Just follow your heart wherever your heart leads. Just follow that. Bridget was born with cerebral palsy. She's 34 years old. She's a member of the community. She enjoys being out with others and she likes riding on her bike. Uh, she just loves to be outside and, and be around people. Bridget actually uses expressions. She smiles very broadly when she's pleased with something. When she was born, she had some delays. She didn't roll over as quick as other children, but at 20 months, she had a grand mal seizure that lasted over an hour and she was in ICU. When she came out of there, she didn't know any of us. She lost everything really and gone back to being an infant. We have tons of support, and that doesn't always happen. Parents have a lot of fears of what happens if something happens to us. With us, we have a plan. We have others to jump in who are family, and other families don't have that, and it's scary for them. She feels comfortable around most people. If we walk through the mall, you get a lot of stares, and it, it does happen, especially little kids. And, you know, sometimes I'll just stop when I see little kids staring, and the mother's pulling their arm away, and I'll just stop and say, her name's Bridget. She's just like the, everyone else. She just needs more support to be a part of things. We make sure that she has the opportunities to be in the community with other people. I've written a letter to the Y saying, there's not a lot for Bridget to do. And they wrote back to me and asked for a meeting and were very nice and went in and they said, you know, what can we do for you? They said, we looked it up and saw that you have a nonprofit. Uh, would you like to come here? We had just a couple of people and now we've hired PTA to do fitness. And we have all different disabilities. So she's around people who talk and walk and, and she has friendships and they all know her. Her and, and even the people outside of Epic in the Y themselves, if she's doing her walking in the hallway, they're cheering her on and saying, hi, Bridget, how are you? So she's a part, she's a part of a community inside the Y. This is giving her somewhere to go that's hers and having her own friends and having her own life outside of here. I, I think exposure is, is so it's so important to people with disabilities to, to be a part of things and to decide for themselves what they like and what they don't like. Everyone has a desire to communicate and everyone wants to be heard and everybody has wants and needs and I think to be able to voice them so that everyone can hear you. I feel bad sitting here and interpreting everything for her. I'm sure she has needs and, and wishes that are beyond what I know or can figure out. Delaware's small, so that's the wonderful thing about Delaware. I'm not sure this could happen in other states, but you know, you can go to Legislative Hall and talk to your legislators and you see them in the stores and they all know you. And she reminds them that there is a population of people out there that do not have voices, but do have things to say and have wants and needs.
not reject or neglect us. And don't try to kick us to the curb. For our ethnic diversities, we are many flavors, some with disability and many without disabilities. We are proud of being who we are, black, white skin, Latinos, and many other ethnic groups. Practicing religion of our choice, nurturing our disabilities with our music, food, for taste, and creative arts. Loved by our families, friends, and self-motivated. Our thoughts reflect mandate that we are equal in our society. We are a rich culture with many flavors ingrained into today's society. Welcome to Delta Community College. My name is Marissa Corriano, and I am a Delta Tech student. This is the best college ever, and someday I'm going to graduate and do a study abroad in Scotland. My major is early childhood education because I want to be a teacher someday. My biggest dream is to teach preschool and to live on my own. My third year in high school, when they said, Oh, Marissa, you're going to graduate next year. I was thinking, how am I going to ever do this? How am I going to do this with a trach and a ventilator? When you come to Dell Tech and you are disabled, you work with a counselor named Stephanie Spadoncini, and she will help you coordinate your accommodation plan. You will get extra time on your tests, extra time in your homework, because I know everybody has therapies and stuff. I just want more people with disabilities here. We could have fun. We could have therapists come and, and do therapy at the college. We could have nurses training. You'll be able to succeed in life. Don't worry, don't stress. Whenever I get frustrated, I say, I am a strong woman. I'm a power of faith. I'm a college woman. I am strong. I am powerful, and I have survived this pandemic. When I graduate, I want to walk across the stage on my own. I'll have my doctors, nurses, therapists, and my whole family clapping for me. I will feel proud. There's Marissa Goriano walking up the steps on her own. Let's hear it for her. My name is Alyssa Cowan, and I work for Sector McGarrett office. I applied probably about 40 jobs. I got email for the governor office, a phone ring. It says, hi Alyssa, this is Rita from DHSS. We were happy, glad to welcome you in the office of Sector. And now I've been here about almost not use. Ebony is my supervisor. She helped me sweating, take pictures at events, post it on Facebook. My tickle day, pretty much what they need me to do. And once in a while I see the governor, he always say, Hello, Alyssa, how are you doing? My side business, I had a dog named Daisy and I came up with Daisy toy box. I did like dog toys and cat toys. All the cat toys has catnip inside. 
and then dog toys. It's really like a bone shape with stuffing. So I do blanket, dog bed, scarves. When this cover happened, I start handmade mask. So I got a sewing machine and I love it. It take about five minutes for a mask. And then I just growing, growing, growing. And then I know that the kids getting ready to school. So I did a little bit similar, but it's a different size. I've done donate to a church. Other people need it. Bus driver said, a mask is so amazing. And like, wow, you got talent. And I just figure, if some people don't have masks and like, hey, for free, hey, look. In my office, it's like a small closet. I have photos on the cabin. Got me and Connie. It was for Goodwill. I've got awards. WJBR 99.5 2014 and like a certificate got Chris Coons and I have a picture of me and my niece just turned three this year. I have um disability. Everyone different, I'm different. Just try. I've done it. I just enjoy myself. Mi nombre es Nancy Lemus. Uh, mi hijo se llama Christopher García. Yo nací en México. Uh, nací en el estado de Guanajuato. Y he estado aquí en Delaware desde que tengo cuatro años. Y Chris nació aquí. Él es un niño típico de 16 años. Cuando le conviene, le entiende. Y cuando no, no entiende. Su maestro dice que él es el class clown. Que si alguien se ríe, alguien llora, alguien destornuda, él es el que está muerto de la risa. Chris entiende las malas palabras. Porque si tú dices una mala palabra, Chris está muerto de la risa. Si dices something fresh, él es el primero en estar muerto de la risa. Antes de COVID, él se iba al cine a, con su enfermero. Cada fin de semana se iban al cine. Chris le gustan los ruidos, a, incluso cuando otra gente se ríe, le causa gracia escuchar las risas de otras personas. Entonces, si él va al cine y, y otra gente se está riendo, él también se está riendo. Le gusta viajar. Cuando viajamos en avión, su parte preferida de él es cuando arranca el avión, a, cuando hay turbulencia. Mientras otras personas están asustadas, él está feliz. Cuando aterriza y er hay turbulencias, él es feliz. Tú lo escuchas gritar y reír. Uh, lo hemos llevado a Disney. Se ha subido al roller coaster, se ha subido al elefante que vuela. Uh, también fuimos a Gatorland y este, se subió a un zipline y abajo había muchos este, alligators. Hemos ido a Bahamas. Hemos ido a Jamaica, hemos estado en Playa del Carmen, las Islas Caimanes. Hemos estado en, en varios lugares, han nadado con delfines y como en tres o cuatro ocasiones hemos estado en México. Y le digo, Chris, ¿quieres viajar? Y siempre me mira y se sonríe. Ya, yeah, vamos a ir a Cancún para tu cumpleaños número 16. No es emocionante. <risa> Chris es una persona que le gustan las emociones fuertes, a él le gusta estar donde, donde está todo lo que se escucha fuerte. Este fin de semana tuvo mariachi y fueron y le tocaron al pie de su cama y él estaba muerto de la risa porque le gusta la trompeta, le gusta todo lo que es fuerte, le gustan los tambores, todo lo que es escandaloso, a él le encanta. A la gente no sabe que yo trabajo, tengo hasta tres trabajos para que Chris pueda viajar, para que Chris pueda hacer cosas. Para mí lo más fácil es, es querer a mi hijo. Lo más fácil para mí es adorar a mi hijo, es tenerle respeto, a mirar que su vida sea digna, que él tenga dignidad, que tenga alegría. Para mí eso es, esa es una vida, esa es una buena vida.
I am Kayla Kosmowski. I'm in ninth grade and I am 15 years old. I make honor roll in, in high school. I am going to be amazing sophomore. I love to do cheer and hang out with my friends. I'm gonna take driver's side this year. It's gonna be amazing. I see people looking at me. Oh, that girl is rocking that pink car. <laughs> I have all the social media, TikTok, I have Snapchat, I have Instagram because you can connect with people and I love to dance because it brings me good mood. I am a Dowser Drum girl. Having Dowser Drum is, is, um, is great for me. We all have differences. We, um, we try our hardest and I'm so pr proud of myself. I'm the first daughter with a disability and I love my mom so much. She is amazing. She gives people back with charities, with the Dallas Drama, with, with autism, with wheelchairs. And we do things with uh, 321, uh, which is not profit with a disability. My dad is the president of it. And we do fundraisers. We went to Washington, D.C. and we met with uh, Joe Biden. He was been my hero since when I was like five or six or seven. Kayla's Law helps people with disabilities and save money. It's a big deal, it's important. I was super, super proud of myself. Well, my favorite thing to do for, for cheer is to smile and um, to do the cheers, to practicing the cheers. To, I say to, to, my mom, to my mother, whenever I go um, to cheer, don't be stressed, mom. You're my hero, and you always keep me smiling, no matter what, and she's been a rock star. She's so inspirational. I want to be a person who helps people. I want to make people happy because it brings me good energy, and I love it. Excuse me. Yes. I have to ask, are you two married? Why, yes, we are. Oh my God, that is so wonderful. You're such a saint. I've been taking care of him for nearly 40 years. Wow, thanks a lot, jeez. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Do I look like a coat rack to you? Don't worry, I got you. <clears throat> yeah, that really happens.
I am proud of my disability because it allows me to see the world in a way that not everyone can. I am so proud of myself and I'm gonna be a great student at my high school. When I graduate, I'm gonna walk across the stage on my own. I'll have my doctors, nurses, therapists, and my whole family clapping for me. I will feel proud. Everybody has a disability somewhere or somehow, but that doesn't mean that they can stop loving or being friends with anybody. I have to be kind of micro-focused on the space I'm walking through. It's almost like a superpower. I'm proud of that. We can give back to people and um, change people's lives. And for that, I am just so happy and so grateful. Being somebody with a disability and being proud of it is embracing who you are. People without disabilities is the standard. And the more you are like them is the better person that you are. And I look at it more as, hey, check this out. I'm unique. Christopher, as a person with disability, he shakes the medical world. He challenges doctors. He challenges science. Disabled people will will tell you uh, that, that they look at the world differently. It's cliche, but I do think uh, my disability uh, gives me a unique perspective of the world, and I'm proud of that. To know that you're worth something and know your self-worth, and nobody has to tell you and pat you on the head and say good job all the time to make you feel good because you know you're doing a good job and you know you're doing the best you can. Disability pride means almost like this special Olympic oath. Be brave. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Go for it. We all have differences. We cannot be human beings without being different. And I don't need to be anybody else because I'm too busy being me. And each person brings their experience together to make one. That's what pride means to me.